guys, I'm just going to do a full face demo of these A2O Lab products and I'm starting with the Ultra HD primer spray which I don't typically use but it was nice and refreshing, I'll use it again. And then I'm going in with the Wonder Skin Poreless Primer which has a nice um, jelly kind of consistency and I'm just doing that um, circle application where you go in circles one way and then the other which is a pore filling technique and then I'm gonna go in with this clean color matte eyeshadow primer while the face primer is kind of setting and I'm gonna put that all over my brows so I can start in with filling my brows in so I'm gonna blend that out with this angled fluffy kabuki for eyes which comes from the 10 piece kabuki set and then I'm gonna grab my color board that has all my matte shadows in it. So this is the 24 piece brush set and I'm just grabbing the E119 which is a spoolie and cleaning up my brows just kind of pointing them in the right direction and then I'm gonna grab the E114 angled brow brush and pick up M6 and put that just on the tail and uh, outline my brows to create a little bit of shape. I was a little underwhelmed with the quality of the uh, shadows when I did on-screen swatches, but it came out pretty well here. So then I'm picking up M13, which is this black and brown, and I'm going to put that all over right up to the front. And then I'm going to go in with M12, this nice taupey shade, and put that right in front of the brown. I didn't bring the brown all the way up to the front because I didn't want to have a really harsh line. So here's how that looks so far. I think that's pretty good. Um, this is a microfiber towel from the Dollar Tree. I'm just cleaning off the brush. And then I'm going in with Pure Beige, which I just needed a little dot of that to clean up my brows. So I'm going to put that right under my brows with the F16 and then um, kind of outline on the top as well. And normally I don't do the top and bottom in the light shade. I reserve the light shade for the bottom and put a, a skin tone on the top. But uh, I didn't feel like doing that this time. <laughs> I just wanted to try it out and see how it worked. So the application was nice, and then I'm going back with that same fluffy angled kabuki I used to put on the primer, and it's working really well to blend this out, so using that for like that concentrated eye brightening type of deal worked just fine. So again, that was the clean color primer, which is one of the only things along with the microfiber that's not from the AOA or A2O line. And I'm putting that in the crease in the outer V, and I'm going with that kind of uh, fluffy kabuki from the 10 piece set and I'm putting this shade on just on the crease and slightly above as my transition. Then I'm going in with the E112 brush and I'm picking up M4 and putting that in the outer V and the crease just to deepen it up a little bit. So it's going right underneath the transition shade we just put down. And I have hooded eyes so this is really just to kind of create a little bit of a shape. Then I'm going with M5 on that fluffy kabuki and I am just trying to blend those shades together a bit. That's a nice peachy shade. And then I'm going back in with that deeper brown and putting that back in to make sure that I still have that depth. And then just blending them all together. Now I'm going in with the Ultra HD Concealer in Peach. And I just want to show you guys a little bit how difficult it was for me to get product out. This is a new product. So other than swatching, I have not used it, and it's just so tough to get it out. And then once I did, I was kind of appalled at how much product came out because you only need a little bit. Anyway, I'm going in with the E122 brush, and I'm going to use that to cut the crease. So yeah, that worked really well for that purpose and it created a nice base. I'm just cutting the crease to about three quarters of the way. And this is the E113 brush. I'm using that just to pack on this Luster Finish L9 onto the front like third of my lid. So I wasn't getting the finish that I wanted, I'm just using this Ultra HD uh, setting spray to try to foil that up a little bit and I think it did help to give it more impact. So I'm going in with this L2 Luster Finish Shadow, which is a nice peachy foily shade, and I'm putting that right next to the white. I did not use any setting spray on this one. Now with no product on the brush, I'm just going to blend that white into the peach. 
And now I'm going to go in with the E111 angled brush and I'm going to put this matte brown called M13 on the outer V. If I knew what I was doing in the beginning, I would have done this first. This is not the kind of thing that you want to do after you've already cut your crease. And then I'm blending it with that fluffy kabuki from the 10 piece set. Now I'm going in with this deepened cranberry M10 and I'm putting that right in front of the brown and just blending those two together. I'm trying to be as precise as I can because I've already done most of my eye work. Leaving just a little bit of space because I'm going to go in with L4 from the Luster Collection. I'm going to put that right next to the peach. And now with the AOA Studio Wipes, I'm using the green tea scent. I'm just cleaning up my hands and cleaning up the outside of my eye. And now I'm going to go in with this Wonder Skin Mattifying Primer. I'm going to put some of that on the back of my hand and then grab a couple of these Ultra HD concealers in Chestnut and Fawn and try to make my own foundation. So I got a big glob of the primer and then about half that of the Fawn and then like a little dot of the Chestnut to deepen up the color. And I'm going to use this flat top kabuki, which is again from the 10 piece set. And I'm going to just use the handle just to mix everything together. Uh, the color might not be perfect. I was just kind of trying to mix things together on the fly. You could certainly customize this more. And I'm speeding this up, but this is basically the application in real time. So you can see what it looks like with one layer of coverage. And then I'm going back in and doing two layers. And you can also see how it blends. This is another layer of coverage, that's two. I think one probably works for most people. It's a nice medium to full coverage. And even though that was a mattifying primer, the finish is not really matte. It's very luminous actually. But I think it looks really natural. I'm just doing the best that I can to get the um, to get most of my face covered with this foundation and then I'm going to go back in with this angled kabuki from the 10 piece set and try to clean up right around the brows where I told you before I don't normally like to go light so I can try to make it look less like that halo thing. So overall I was very impressed with the mixture of the concealer with the primer. Now I'm going in with this beveled Wonder Blender, which is again $1, that's from the AOA Studio line. I just want to see how it blends out that foundation mix and it worked just fine. It blended out really easily. Now I'm going to mix the yellow color corrector and I <laughs> was struggling because I hated the way that, that just pooped out. And then I'm going to mix that with Fawn to create a slightly lighter than my skin tone under eye concealer color. I didn't want to go as light as the beige one. And then I mixed it with the handle of the brush that I was using and I'm just going to apply it with that same thing. And then I'm trying to blend it with the Wonder Blender, but you see how it's just kind of staying where it is? Um, I didn't want to wait till it set, so I just chucked that and grabbed the Flat Top Kabuki and finished blending it out with that, which worked much, much better. I still had a hard time and I was spending a lot of time on blending it, so I wasn't super thrilled with using this for under eye concealer. So the concealer by itself worked really well as an eyeshadow base. It worked really well to clean up the brows where you're not looking to blend a lot, you're just looking to kind of place it. Um, overall, I wasn't super impressed with using it as the under eye concealer. So I'm taking this angled fluffy kabuki from the 10 piece set and I'm going to pick up Absolute. That is a single bronzer. And I'm going to use that all over just kind of pushing it into my skin to set this foundation so I can put some stuff on top of it. It did okay wasn't super mattifying or anything, but that's not the intention. And then I'm picking up this flat top kabuki for eyes, and I'm going to use Karst, which is another single bronzer. I'm going to put that in the hollows of my cheeks or wherever I would contour. So here's how it's applying. You can see I am getting a little bit of color there. I think if that's how you were planning to use these bronzers, then you probably could. The only uh, issue is that there's not a ton of deeper skin tones. And then I'm just using it to carve out the nose a little bit. Now with this set of pearlized eyeshadows, I'm going to pick up the tapered kabuki for eyes from the 10 piece set and I'm just going to stick that in my inner eye tear duct area and then right under the brows to highlight. And 
And now I'm going in with the E114 brush again. That's the same an angled brow brush that I used earlier. And I'm going to pick up M1, which is a nice ruddy kind of terracotta brown. And I'm going to put that all over my uh, bottom lid. And I'm going in with M10, which is that cranberry shade. And I'm going to concentrate that right on the outer part of my lower lid just to rust it up. And then I'm gonna take M6, which is that stark black, and I'm gonna put that right on the lash line, but only on the outer part of the eye. And then I'm gonna bring it up a little bit to start building the back side of a cat eye. So like I mentioned, when I first swatched these in my video, my like first impression haul video, I was not super impressed with these matte shadows, but I really like them here. Now I'm using some setting spray and going back into the M6 Stark Black to see if I can use this kind of as a, an eyeliner, kind of like you would do a gel liner or um, a cake. And I'm happy to report that this does not develop any kind of hard plate on top of the shadow after using the primer. You know, going into it wet didn't cause any texture issues. Here I'm just pouting because I got some schmutz on my <laughs> color board, which is an issue with that kind of matte packaging. And now with this fluffy kabuki from the 10-piece set, I'm just going to pick up this color Ray, which is one of the single blushes. Um, and I'm not seeing a ton of color payout, but I'm sure that partially that's because it's so close to my skin tone. And I was looking for something that was kind of subtle. So yeah, not a ton of color payoff there. And I'm going in with Starlight, which is one of the single, uh, one of the single highlights. I'm going in and I'm going to put that on the bridge of my nose and then I'm also putting it on my cupid's bow. So it wasn't like crazy impactful or anything. Now because I didn't have any lip products in the A2O Lab launch, I'm just going to grab these two liquid eyeshadows called Glow Liquid Eyeshadows and I only ended up using the F18 retractable lip brush and I'm just painting the deeper shade on the outside. Kind of rubbing my lips together to blend that out a little bit. And then I'm going to put the lighter shade on the inside. So yeah, I did not use those as they were intended, but I think they worked pretty nicely for this purpose. They took a while to set, but um, they didn't feel crazy or anything on my lips. So if you were planning to use them that way, go for it. And then I'm just spritzing the setting spray all over and using the color board as a fan. So this is the finished look. I think the primer actually did a great job on my um, texture because I have pores and it didn't seem super apparent and I really like the foundation. I just had those couple issues with the blending of the concealer and I also had an issue with the way that the concealer, um, the way you dispense it out of the, the product itself. But I was really happy with everything else so even though I did not like the matte shadows when I swatched them, they work really well over a primer. So I am really happy that I ended up getting that set. Here's a close up just so you can see the texture and you can kind of see how everything actually looks on the face. So that is it. Let me know if you guys have any questions about the look that I put together or if you have any questions about the products that I used. I will be back to do another one of these using some of the Spectrum products. Thanks so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to check out my Instagram, Glossary of Tags.